Spider-Man 2's Mary Jane controversy was all over the internet. I made videos covering it, how they uglified the character from the gorgeous face capture model to the terrifying <laughs> and downright ugly what appeared to even be a self-insert from one of the uh, queerdos on the, t the writing team. You're welcome to watch any of my videos that talk about that. But now fans are kind of taking things a little bit too far. And uh, <laughs> the, the face model for Mary Jane has spoken out against that. So let's go ahead and dive into this video and talk about what is going on, which my camera, my camera out of frame. Okay, so just for refresher purposes, here is the beautiful actress here, uh, actress model. And this is what they <laughs> turned her into. It's a monstrosity. It is sad. It is terrible. You hate to see it, right? This is this uglification of female characters that has been going on in the gaming industry. Now, can I for one just say, now, a lot of people, you notice a lot of the woke tards, they're, they're backlash, the backlash they give or the gaslighting that they offer to us who say, hey, can we, can we look at beautiful characters, you know, especially when they were originally designed to be beautiful? Can we, you know, can we not make them ugly? Why is the backlash always, you know, oh, just because you want to fap to characters all the time. You want to do that. They, they take it to a degen place because I think they live their lives so degenerately that they just project that onto everybody else. Um, they're the ones making furry rule 34 content. Uh, they're the ones doing all that. And so you often see, uh, for example, with a lot of my criticisms about Tomb Raider, how they changed that classic Lara Croft from this beautiful, curvy, power fantasy, strong woman to um, just more of that. So they, they keep making her more and more masculine. They keep giving her, especially, I mean, you, you even look at the Netflix, uh, which I've made a video about this as well, multiple, but they just try to give her that standard cookie cutter, lesbian, more masculine design. And so a lot of the backlash that I get about that is, is, oh, well, you call yourself a Christian and you are, you're against uh, pornography and you're against uh, all that kind of stuff. Well, then how can you be against that, but then still say that you want Lara Croft to look like, look like she used to? Well, come on now. This is a complete disrespect to the female figure to say that, oh, because I want Lara Croft to look beautiful and still retain her curves that she was originally created with. Um, there's nothing pornographic about that. And, it, and, it, and if you think that that's a pornographic thing, then uh, you're a coomer brain and you need to stop watching corn. All right. Uh, get in the real world. Uh, okay. I was making sure this. I was searching Mary Jane on Twitter, and you would not believe the, speaking of pornographic, pornographic pictures that were showing up. I'm like, what is going on? I just searched Mary Jane, dadgummit. All right, anyway, so let's dive into the actual topic at hand here. So we have Culture Crave reporting this, says, Stephanie Tyler Jones calls out creepy Spider-Man fans. Now, I'm not going to lie, when I first saw that first sentence, I was thinking, oh, is she just calling them creeps because they don't want Mary Jane to look ugly or get uglified. Is that it? But no, she actually did have <laughs> some valid reasons to be upset here. Um, so she was the face model for Mary Jane in the Insomniac Games. Um, and what she's reported here too is she has a regular job uh, with skincare company. So she doesn't even, uh, I, I believe she isn't even doing acting and modeling at this time. Honestly, I say good for her, good for her for that. Um, but anyway, so let's just go ahead and read what she had to say, say here. She said, Dear Spider-Man fans, I appreciate the love for my role in the Spider-Man games and the positive response to my version of MJ uh, has gotten over the years. However, I am no longer an actively auditioning actor or model. The shoots I do now are purely a creative outlet for myself and a way to collaborate with friends I love. Over the weekend, some followers crossed boundaries. One even went to the extent of calling my workplace and leaving multiple voicemails wanting to speak with me and requesting I call back, which is unacceptable and considered stalking. 
My skincare page is not for Spider-Man or MJ fans. Bottom line is that I came into work this morning and immediately felt unsafe and uncomfortable hearing those voicemails. Please respect that I am a human being trying to make a living just like you, and I kindly ask for boundaries to not be crossed. Messages will not be answered. I will block you if you make me feel uncomfortable, and you can unfollow me if this disappoints you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, wow. Um, here's the thing, though. It wasn't ever specified, and, and a lot of people are just going to jump on the wagon and assume right? Especially those woke tard peeps. They're going to assume, oh, she's, it's, it's, she's getting hate backlash. This is from, this is from the bigots. This is from the people who thought that the game model was ugly. But I think what this more so sounds like is somebody who, uh, is on the other side of things, right? And, um, and who was just, uh, fan, I will say fanboying, I will assume the gender here, <laughs> fanboying a bit too hard and uh, tried to have a personal conversation with this person. Now, I think that this is just a testament to, guys, the internet, let the internet be the internet and the people on the internet be the internet. There are healthy boundaries that need to be at play here. And this is just, um, you know, stop using the internet as a, a replacement for your real life, okay? And this is important for everybody to know. <laughs> um, I know it's I, I can be chronically online and stuff. Granted, a lot of that is my job, but, uh, uh, you know, we all have, uh, we all can have room to improve on this kind of stuff, but some people take it way too far. It's bad enough to be on the internet too much. I, I see this. I see the negative effects of this all the time, but it's even worse when that is a replacement for real life. It is a replacement for building relationships, friendships, whatever it may be, um, with other people IRL. And this is also a danger of AI and, and the danger that AI poses on people. Now, I know it's so easy for some people to say, oh, real life is hard. Real life, oh, tr you know, trying to make friends or, you know, people are mean. People will hurt your feelings. People ain't loyal. All this stuff. And especially when it comes to the relationship side of things, trying to date this, that, and the other. It's tough, dude. It's tough. So a lot of people just kind of throw their hands up in the air and they um, sort of put themselves in situations where they are experiencing a parasocial relationship. You know, say they follow Mary Jane here, or this, this actress, um, uh, Stephanie here. And they're like, oh, I love her. I love her from what she is in Mary Jane. Also, she's so beautiful. So I, therefore I love her. This is a girl I would want to date. And then they get themselves worked up or they follow. Let's say, um, they send her a nice compliment on her Instagram and she replies, oh, thank you. Or something like that. They really feel like they're getting, um, something out of that, a connection that is, is, more extreme, you know, that, that, that might be just a polite interaction, but it doesn't mean that they have this personal connection. And some people will take that too far, especially when you're dealing with people who perhaps have conditions like Asperger's or something to that effect. And uh, they cannot differentiate just a kind comment from, oh, she must like me type thing. Uh, it's so important to experience the real world and to build those and and you know when it when it comes to AI and stuff, which is was a tangent I was gonna get on, um, the danger that uh, with that and especially these AI girls, these AI influencers and all that, they just tell you everything you want to hear. Or it's getting to the point where you can just download or access this AI woman who will tell you everything you want and who will be your girlfriend. Um, it's just very dangerous territory. Very creepy. Um, and the thing is, is yes, our, there is such a huge gender divide right now on social media. There's a bunch of women who want to hate on all men. And there's a bunch of men who want to hate on all women. And there are people blaming all of society's problems on one singular gender here. Okay. One of the two genders. Oh, one gender is entirely at fault here. That's a huge issue. Um, it's tearing people apart. And I do think that that's part of a further goal and agenda uh, for some of the powers that be, if you will, who want society to be easy to control. And how do you make people easy to control? You make everybody hate each other and not trust each other. So when you have 
people who are sitting at home constantly, never interacting with the real world, never developing relationships, um, having AI girlfriends or just parasocial relationships instead of a, an, an actual life, then yeah, people are going to be a lot easier to control in that way. Um, they just become uh, homebound, fat, and <laughs> sick, and uh, mentally deranged from the coomer brain that they've got um and all that sort of things so dude live the real world man people can hurt you people will break your heart and there are bad people out there but that doesn't mean it's not worth it go out in the real world make it happen make it happen you know there's a lot of good in the real world that you can experience as well so um you know uh, really unfortunate that Stephanie had to experience that. Um, but anyway, there you have it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I uh, Oh, also, I almost forgot. Don't forget to read your Bible today. And if you want me to read the Bible to you, you can check out my Bible channel, Bible Time with Melanie Mack. Thank you all again. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom. Miles Morales is... Miles, Miles Morales. Morales.